What's good, MJ traders and investors? It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back in the pursuit of wealth for an MJ sector review. Today's a review for Tuesday, August 3rd. Hope you were all doing awesome out there. You had a great long weekend for those of you in Canada. It was a holiday yesterday, so back on the grind today. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing Canopy Growth reporting Q1 earnings on Friday, August 6th, pre-market before the opening bell. And then we'll go over some analyst expectations and, and forecasts in terms of EPS and revenue. We'll look at the rest of the news and events in the sector today, and then we'll look at a detailed analysis of the CGC chart and what to expect leading into those earnings. And then we'll look at the rest of the Canadian and the US MJ space. But before we do, make sure to smash the like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll put some timestamps in the description below as well. So the company missed estimates in two of the trailing four quarters and surpassed the same in other two and the average negative surprise being 108.8%. So we know Canopy hasn't had the best of times lately and they've been pretty troubled for the most part, but in terms of analyst expectations, we are expecting negative EPS once again. So the forecast is negative 0.2544 and revenue expected at 152.57 million. That's in Canadian dollars. And it came in, the forecast was 151 million last quarter, it came in very shy of that at 148. So we'll see if CGC can turn it around. The analysts not that much more bullish compared to the previous revenue estimate. So just 1 million higher, a little over 1 million higher. So we'll see if Canopy Growth can turn it around. We know Tilray, had some decent earnings uh, their last quarter. So we'll see if that can can uh, can spread into Canopy Growth's earnings as well and help lift the entire sector. But let me know in the comments below if you are bullish or bearish. Also, let me know in the comments below if you're sad to see uh, Canopy cut ties with Houseplant. Again, this is just another, uh, another example that they've been going through some tough times at the moment. We know that Houseplant ditches Canopy Growth despite strong sales in Canada. So health, house plant, which is South Rogan's MJ company, uh, basically they reached a separation agreement with Canopy Growth, their Canadian partner. And uh, I personally, I really did not enjoy those drinks at all. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you were sad about that, or if you, uh, personally, I think that's probably a good thing for Canopy Growth long term. But looks like uh, house plant's going to be focusing on the California market. Also, another trouble, uh, troubling time for Canopy is the fact that Cointro makes. Maker sues Canopy Growth over Quattro drinks with similar sounding name. So we'll see if there's any, you know, any, any details or any further development on that front, but obviously not going to bode well for the stock. We also have Kronos Group, so Cron to report earnings on Friday as well. So all eyes in the sector will be on Canopy and Kronos to see if they can lift the sector as it's been a bit of a free fall and a falling knife and just an absolute bloodbath for lack of a better word out there in the uh, in the MJ space, both in Canada and US. We also know that Canopy execs earn raises and bonuses after the MJ giant loses 1.7 billion. So executives for MJ producer Canopy Growth receive more than $4 million, 3.2 million in cash bonuses after making solid progress in the year, according to a regulatory filing, even as the company lost 1.7 billion Canadian and laid off hundreds of workers. So some controversy there and, and some speculation going on that uh, that may not have been the best idea but um, you know this is this is what companies do and not uh, not all investors or shareholders agree with it but we know that this is just the way that the uh, the world works so uh, certainly something to consider though I, I know that personally canopy growth is very very overvalued in my opinion so uh, I'm not looking to swing them through earnings let me know in the comments below if you're if you're still holding a fairly sizable position in canopy and you're planning to hold through earnings as we know it's a gamble but uh, we'll look at the chart here in the moment and see if there's some support levels we can play off leading into that I also want to just remind everybody that there's still $400 off for the MJ BizCon which is October 19th to 22nd I'm going to be attending this in beautiful Las Vegas and you have until August 5th so you have two more days until Thursday to get four dollars off so the early bird pricing so you can expect a lot of coverage from, from Power Group on this event in mid-October. Really looking forward to that and probably going to make a pit stop in Colorado as well and test out a bunch. I've, I've never been there, so I really want to go, but also just test, test out a bunch of uh, products as that is the MJ capital of the world, really. All right, so moving on to the CGC chart. In terms of the monthly chart, we're, we're consolidating. We've been consolidating on the monthly ever since February with a lower high and a lower low every single candle. So we're just looking for a monthly higher low at this point. We're still in a monthly uptrend and we have key monthly support coming up at 1383. 
So from current levels, that's only about 26, so another 25% of the downside, we'll say, just rounding down. So if you are looking to take a position leading into earnings, just, just know that it's very risky, nothing's guaranteed, it's, a, it's essentially a gamble. Uh, we do know that Tilray had good earnings and a good earnings reaction, and we do know that we have a lack of resistance on a lot of these MJ names, so it's very possible that we see a short squeeze leading into Friday if we see favorable results from CGC and Cron. But at the moment, we're in a monthly uptrend, we're just scouting a monthly higher low compared to that 1383 low, and with the U.S. prospect of U.S. legalization, everything looking up in the U.S., now may not be a bad time to start scaling in, just like it was on Tilray uh, prior to their earnings. But just keep in mind that, that that monthly support is about 25% away, so you could start to scale in. We did see an EMA 12 and 26 bear cross there on the EMAs, and that has already crossed. So just questioning whether or not we're going to see that much more downside as that bear cross has already occurred but we are rejecting here for the last couple months at that EMA. So taking a look at the weekly time frame, EMA 12 has been rejecting the price as well. Ever since we have that weekly bear flag and confirmed weekly downtrend, we're in a weekly downtrend, but we're still in a monthly uptrend. And generally monthly consolidation is when we, and while we're in a monthly uptrend is when we want to start looking for bullish long-term positions, especially with the US looking to potentially legalize at the federal level. May not be a bad idea, again, not financial advice, this is for entertainment purposes only, but may not be a bad idea to start scaling in, in my opinion. And then we'll be looking at the weekly EMA 12, which is that yellow line we've been rejecting. You can see here we have rejection, 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 and uh, five rejections there in about a month. And ever since we lost it, that has been a brick wall. So if we can get over EMA 12 and a weekly close over EMA 12, which is sitting at 22.17 would be bullish. And that's going to be needed, in my opinion, to shift any real momentum here from the bears as they are absolutely controlling the chart at the moment. But we do have a weekly, a lack of weekly resistance all the way up here to about $27, which is about 46% of upside. So we are ripe for a short squeeze if we do see the market, you know, the broader market, if we see SPY hold on, we don't see a significant drop on Friday on the SP 500 in the broader market. And then if we see a favorable reaction to earnings. This could be right for a short squeeze. We do have resistance here on the daily. We have a mini level here at $20, so it's 20 psychological. And then we also have resistance at 2046. But after that, a lack of resistance all the way up to 2347 on the daily. And it's a bit of an inverse head and shoulders here on the daily time frame as well on CGC. Not the most clear here with the neckline, but psychology is there. And just from current levels, you're looking at on in terms of daily resistance that $20 area looking at about eight to nine percent and then all the way up to that major resistance here at 2347 you're looking at about 26 percent of upside so like I said that monthly support is about 25 percent downside but we also have this monthly support trend line that we've been that we've been watching as well so again not a bad idea to start loading up in my opinion you can see this is holding from all the way back in 2017 we got as low as 490 nine dollars from the low of the march the the pandemic low there but ultimately closed above it we had that brief period here where we dip below and here we are on the monthly dipping below it again but again may not be a bad idea in my opinion to start scaling in in terms of the weekly chart we're well below the the 10 week moving average we could see a bull cross here on the stochastic so some signs of life here in terms of the stochastic macd still got a bunch of work to do the 10 week moving average there at 22 dollars we're still well below the weekly moving averages as well, but we have the 100 weekly moving average there at $22. So that could be an area to target. $22 should be strong resistance if we do get a favorable reaction. We also have the 50 day moving average there at $22.75. So I think $22 is going, we know I have a lack of resistance up until about $20 psychological and then 23 and uh, on the daily time frame, but that $22 area on the weekly and also the 50 day moving average. So $20 and $22 are going to be extremely strong resistances. If we do see a bullish reaction to those earnings, watch $20 and $22 for a potential top. But the 50 day moving average has been rejecting the price all the way since, uh, since February as well, after we had that monster move off the, uh, the back of uh, Biden winning office and Democrats coming in in power. But ever since then, the 50 day moving average has been strong resistance. So one would think that we could, you know, ebb and flow and eventually make our way back to that resistance. 
and that that moving average that's generally what we do when we when we cross below it we generally make our way back to it eventually and when we cross above it and we get extended and we and we distance ourselves like we did in February very very far away from that 50 day moving average we eventually made our way back so it's, it just ebbs and flows so we'll be watching for a similar idea but we did have a, a death cross here on CGC which already played out and that was all the way back in the first week of June first and second week of June so again questioning how much more downside we're really going to see here as we're starting to see those moving averages curl and we've already had that death cross we also have the 20 weekly moving average up at $24 and the VWAP up at $28 I believe the fair market value on this puppy is around $40 so it is it is considered undervalued in terms of fair market value. I believe that was from Morningstar. So, but in terms of just comparison to its peers, I think CGC is very, very overvalued. And I, I think that Hexo is a, is a really good bang for your buck at the moment. But we'll look at the rest of the, the MJ space here in just a moment. But a lot of other names, Hexo, actually, while I think of it, had its death cross today. And a lot of other names had their death crosses already as well. So VFF did, uh, ACB did, Cron, Cron did as well. Uh, there was another name I don't think that had it, so TLRY. No, still hasn't seen its death cross yet. So Tilray has been leading the market, Canopy and, and Tilray. We've sort of seen that, that role switch from, from Canopy to Tilray lately, ever since the merger with Afria, and rightly so, it's the biggest company at the moment in terms of market cap. But again, Tilray rejecting at that 50-day moving average. I mentioned I did a couple of videos uh, last week, I think it was. I said, watch 16.78 and 16.68. We got as high as 16.67, so pretty much right on the money. And from there, we pulled back significantly. So it would have saved yourself, I think it was about 15% of downside. So if you would have taken that, uh, Taking that call out at 16.78, about 16% of downside, almost 17% of downside now. So again, it's good that we saw those death crosses already, but Tilray and Hexo still yet to see their death cross. Not set up well if the broader market starts to pull back either. But uh, S&P 500 had a record daily close today, record candle daily close. You can check out my broader market video from earlier on that for in-depth analysis on the broader market. But in terms of the entire sector, we've seen most of those death crosses already. And in terms of the movers and shakers for today, we had RIV and PWR and High Tide. And on the bull list, we had Cantrust, ACB, and Cron. Notable shout out there to SNDL as well, with a little bit of green and a sea of red. But just finishing up on the Canadian sector here. So Tilray, like I said, on the daily time frame, just scouting for its daily high or low and trend change attempt, lots of room there for a daily high or low. And CGC potential, we're, we're also rejecting at EMA 12 here on the daily. So if we can close, if we can close a daily candle here leading into Friday above that EMA 12 at 1955, that's going to look good in terms of the stock, but key support here at 1805. If we lose 1805, it's, there's really nothing down to 1383. So 1383 is going to be is going to be the support, even on the weekly, 1383, which is our monthly high or low. If we lose 1383, we lose the monthly uptrend. But again, now's the time where we want to, now's the time where you want to start, you know, scaling and, and looking in for looking into long-term positions, especially. You know, when we're, we're down, I think Tilray was down over 81%, CGC down almost 70%, so 68%. But I know once we, once we get the monthly and weekly bounce underway and we, we make our way back up to $25 or $30, that's when we're gonna see the majority of, of retail and, and just everyday Joe Smo investors looking to buy. And that's, uh, that's unfortunate, but that's just the way the market is. I, there's still people messaging me today asking if they should get rid of their MJ. Well. The first thing I say is Tilray, you know, down 81%. Do you think now's the time you want to sell? I, it just doesn't make any sense to me. A lot of people get the psychology all wrong. I understand though, it's very easy to get caught up in emotions and you just want to stop the bleeding. But uh, that's just going down a rabbit hole. 
and you're going to get stuck in an endless loop. <laughs> this is just what they do. They rinse and repeat and they go on to the next name or the next sector. And that's just the way the Mr. Market works. All right, so taking a look at the US side. So on the bear list, we had BioHarvest, BAM, and MMEN on the bull list, FLGC, GTII, and CL. FLGC is just an absolute beast. From all the way down at 286, hit a high of about 14.74. So 420% gains, that's a great number for the, for the stock, but man, no daily consolidation all the way down till 292 and 286. So I'd be extremely cautious, but just kudos to the bulls on that name. What an absolute monster move there. 400% in about a week. Wow. 11 days, 11, 11 days, seven trading days. That is, that's impressive. MSOS, so we did hit a lower low here with a break of 3511, but we're seeing USMJ with some strength here. So we had Canadian MJ, which was strong, and we saw, you know, taking uh, taking the spotlight after Tilray earnings came out, but now we're starting to see USMJ starting to uh, to take the spotlight back again, acting as a, seeing a little bit of that rotation. So the lead bull was Canadian MJ, off the back of Tilray earnings, USMJ was extremely weak. Now we're seeing that, that switch where Canadian MJ is weak, and we're starting to see USMJ pick up. But you can see here we lost that support, but we didn't get much follow through. And you could even make the argument here that this was a low, high, higher, low, and higher high. You could technically say that this was a daily uptrend confirming, but wasn't a huge pullback, only a pullback of two and a half percent. Bounce wasn't massive either, about three and a half percent. So wouldn't argue with you, but we are rejecting here at EMA 12. So we'll want to, to remain bullish and to believe in, in the bulls to, you know, to, to actually show that they prove and mean anything we need a daily candle close over that EMA 12, which is sitting at 36.52. So we wanna see MSOS close over that level and see some significant upside, to potentially see some significant upside and maintain the upper hand versus Canadian names. But going to be watching, and a lot of these names are just heavily beaten down. Look at look at BAM on the monthly chart. So one $1.14 down about Again, 65, so most names down 60, 70, some even 80%. And BAM also holding this monthly uptrend line as well. So again, now's the time where we should start scaling in, in my opinion, and looking for bullish long-term entries. CL holding monthly EMA 12 there on that last month candle close, so looking good. But again, just look at that lack of resistance here on a lot of our names, and we're likely going to see a massive move in the sector at some point. There's absolutely no sign of that happening yet. But watching for the shift. And like I said, USMJ definitely standing out as, as stronger here. But at the moment, all eyes will be on Canopy Growth and Cron leading into Friday. All right, going to end it there. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth for an MJ Sector Review. And we'll see you tomorrow after market close.